Islam Morris Islam you're in for a treat um, what you're gonna witness today is a short video from the brother Matthews L um, he's been in the movement for a while and he's speaking on issues pertinent to the Moorish American paradigm and this is just something that I think would benefit everyone whether you've been in the movement for a while or you're new to it so this is a broad perspective of people um, a wide range of people who can benefit from this information and I want to thank the brother for taking the time for investing his time with us with the community um, sharing his experience with us his wisdom and in um, in turn actually teaching okay so you definitely will benefit from this you can enjoy this and um, also the brother uh, uh, the brother Matthew Zell wrote this book Morris America's archival palladium and um definitely a great work um i want to commend the brother thank the brother for putting that out there okay this is great uh you definitely want to check that out too okay and hopefully um we can have the brother on again maybe you can send questions to me at bay b-e-y bay at moresinamerica.com and um i can speak with him later maybe we can record something else in the future and just address any uh, questions that you have. But you definitely want to check this out. You want to share it. And you're going to enjoy this. You're in for a treat. Alright. So also check out the brother's book. Morris America's Archival Palladium. And uh, that's brother Matthew Zell. Alright. So definitely save this. Share it. And um, appreciate you too. Alright. Peace. Islam Moors, peace and blessings to everyone. Now, I want to give honor to uh, Brother Lord Michael Douglas Be uh, Ill, rather, and his wife and his family. Because that brother, you know, I think is an upright Moor. And, you know, what the Prophet intended for us to be like in that direction. Islam. And um, I first got introduced to him, I, I seen a video of him and his wife was in Chicago, Mecca, Islam. And I was like, man, these Moors are, you know, they are right, you know, Islam. And I enjoyed the video. And I, more than that, I just enjoyed their presentation. You know, they was happy. And Moors are supposed to be happy. Not, you know, all twisted up. So, you know, just a lot going on. And some of what I've been thinking about, uh, some of the reasons why things seem to be all twisted up and confused and so forth. And matter of fact, I ran across the group, and I belong to that group, Moors, Moorish Americans, Moors in America. Islam, Moorish Americans, backslash Moors in America. You know, honor to all of those that, the administrators and those that are working with that group, because I think they said that group has over 8,000 members. At one time, it said over 12,000. And that's a significant uh, amount of, of our people to come together, and it's a significant platform, Islam, on which we could build and share useful information. Um, for the first time, you know, for the first time in history, uh, um, at least the last four centuries, the Moors of North America have an opportunity to come out finally of the enslavement and the bondage of Negro, Black, and colored, and being under those uh, descriptions and definitions and forced into a, uh, that level of having to try to exist. First time in centuries. We have this opportunity. We're blessed with this technology. And I, I thank, again, uh, the Mo, Brother Lloyd Michael Douglas Ill. I really thank because he gave me opportunity. He has a podcast and he shared a, a recording. And, you know, we, we wanted to do an interview, but my time is out, out of time with his, out of sync with his, you know, so I really don't have the time to do it. But hopefully he'll let me speak to some issues every now and then. Islam, every now and then. And, and right now, like I said, this is a significant and critical era of time for our people. It's no time to be planned. And some of the stuff that, like I said, comes onto this group from people who say they are Moors or uh, Asiatics or whatever they are, that is it's so inconsistent with what the Moors Divine and Mo uh, National Movement is all about. I asked the question, why are they coming on this page? Why? I don't understand that. And it's, it's, it's indicative of what's going on 
across the country with Moorish American with the movement. You have a lot of elements involved. You know, you got a lot of people running around pointing at people saying they're agents. And Man, agents, if they're working, you don't know who they are. But one way they work is to cause confusion through disinformation. Okay? We need to be aware of it. Look at the, the, all of the controversy with the last political, uh, uh, major political election, with the interference through the computer system and com using the computer technology. So if there's going to be an attack on the movement or whatever, that's one way it's going to come. Because behind that, that name or whatever, we don't know who's behind that or behind that information or disinformation. Because all you have to do is look at it and you can see that it's all coming out of the same hole. It's just like a flock of parrots all saying the same thing, verbatim, word for word. So what are they coming to this group for? As a matter of fact, if you look at the definition or the descriptions, rather, of the group and what the group is all about, it have you scratching your head. We have, a, we have an opportunity. I'm not angry about slavery. But apparently a lot of people still are, or they're twisted by, or they haven't looked at the history of our ancestors. We got a chance to come out of all that mess and stay out of it, hopefully. Stay out of it. And I'm not, I'm not around to let anybody niggify the prophet or the temple. I swore I, and, and have vowed I will protect the prophet in the temple, and I'm going to do that, just that, rather, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Islam? We got a chance to go back to our place as a nation. We haven't been a nation in 500 years. Our, our place, a nation among nations. And all of those nations that constitute the great humanity, the great humanity, the great human family, the only race, the human race, all this other uh, verbiage from uh, slavery and the system of slavery and all these other descriptions of human beings or what they call non human all that stuff is not applicable to the human family. The human family is looking at us in our situation, and they know we, we're the only ones that can change it. This is our time. But the prophet said that without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength, never realizes his strength, never sees his potential, never, never tests his strength. And this confusion coming against the prophet in the movement is a foe. And I'm here to say that foe is a midget. And he's wrong. But the only way that that foe can, can really uh, defeat you is you give him the opportunity. When we look at what a lot of people and groups are presenting, we of all people should clearly see that it is not without um, controversy and it is, has nothing to do what, Pro what Prophet Noble Drew Ali was all about or the movement was established for. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. And I'm going to go and read the descriptions of the group, but what precipitated this was this Asiatic came on the group page and began to insult the temple and say the temples were, I don't know, Uncle Tom's or sellouts or, or they weren't uh, prepared to deal with the issues of the day and all this other foolishness. Then he said, we need to upgrade and, and rebuild. See, this is what precipitated my whole thought along this line. We need to, I said, we? Mo, what you mean we? You just, you said the temple ain't right, no, in, in essence. The movement ain't right. So you're not a part of that. So what do you mean we? There is no we. And this is what the Moors, new Moors and young Moors, you're going to have to realize this. Those people are not a part of the movement or the temple. So it's no need to engage with them because if you engage with them, you have to go down to their level. And the wise man said, never argue with a fool because he'll drag you down to his level and beat you with experience. Okay? It's not. So I had to, to, why are these people here? As a matter of fact, it says, um, the group name is, Moorish Americans backslash Moors in America. Where well, there's people posting stuff talking about black people this and black people that and white people. What are you talking about? 
Why post that there? It says right there at the top. It don't say black America, white America. See, that's part of your enslavement. You can't let it go because it has such a control of your thinking. Even if it, it, it if you feel or know that it can't be right, you still got to go down that road. You still have to, to use those terms and slave to it. But I'm, I'm going to go back to the, um, the description. The, the description. Okay. There's nothing in the name of the group that says black people are white people. Okay. Half of what Moors uh, or people that say they're Moors uh, are posting all day, every day, is demonstrating the opposite. It's like half of the people that come into this group do not even bother to read the description of the group, what the group is about or what the group is not about. Something, something more is wrong, clearly wrong, with this picture. You know, and I, I tell you, I just wanted to speak on this, so hopefully I'll get a, uh, a chance to, <laughs> to say what's in my heart. Is long? Because I believe right now that the people who are doing more to hurt our efforts and doing more to hurt the movement, the freedom and the nationhood for our people are the people who are coming with this out of the way, wild, anti-American, law-breaking foolishness and trying to link it to the prophet. Just because you put the prophet's picture out there, you can't link that to him. He has nothing to do with that. And you have these figureheads who are people are practically worshiping, worshiping rather, who are wrong as two left shoes. Obviously, clearly, but they're flocking to these people who are feeding them full of half truth. Then they'll throw the prophet's picture out there. Now here's here's their logic, here's their reasoning. Well, the the uh, the temple has been infiltrated. The temple is infiltrated. A lot of the Moors are, are, are agents. Uh, the 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 temple is a church. The temple doesn't believe in all of this craziness. And then tell them, yeah, but go to the temple though. That if if you can't see that, there's not enough, you don't have the light of a match if you can't see that's an obvious contradiction. That's crazy. Okay, okay. Lord have mercy. Let me see. Morse Americans. Moors in America. I'm going to the description, okay? Because I want to look at the group, look at a clear description of the group, and then what the Asiatics or whoever come on the group site, what they're posting. Group type, study group. Okay, I'll just say no more, study group. Then it tells you to go to their site, uh, Moors in America. I went there. I saw like a banner, says Moors in America. And then they had a combined Moorish and American flag, Islam. I saw that. Then there appeared just to be different posts, you know, and different links that would come up that was on information on Moorish Americans or Moors. Okay, now back, back to the description of, of, of the group itself. And it says, this group is dedicated to issues relevant to Moorish Americans. Moorish history. Um... What kind of, you know what, Moorish history, what kind of comparison? I heard these Asiatics talking about the struggle for power after the prophet left the farm and who shot John and who should have been the Grand Sheik and all of this petty stuff, a, a gang, of, a, a handful of thugs shooting it out with the police or whatever, when there were perhaps hundreds of thousands of Moors in America actually a part of the movement. Every, everything, uh, every uh, group and every religion is going through turmoil when the leader leaves the, uh, the form or passes out, of, out, of, out of, of this life. They always go through that. That ain't got nothing to do with our illustrious history. Nothing to do with it at all. I don't want to go there because that, that situation there. These are some hateful moors. Some of them are exotic that, that follow certain ideologies built on what should have happened or could have happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They some haters. But, uh, mm, okay. They, okay, you know what they say right here? 
in the description it says, please keep it clean. Please keep it clean. What does it say here? Spirited debate is encouraged. Abusive and or foul language, however, will not be tolerated. Did you hear that? So not they come right on there and cuss like you said, we'll cuss you out. They'll put the F you and so on and so forth in a minute. Okay. Unfortunately, from time to time, uh, it's not time to time anymore, Mo. <laughs> it's all day, every day. But I'm respecting what, you, what, you, what they said here in the description. From time to time, we have people posting anti Moorish American subject matter. If you uh, come on the group or come in the group site to say what's wrong with the temple or the movement, that is your real motive for coming in the first place. You didn't come in there to build or to learn nothing about Moorish history or, or anything like that. You already had an agenda before you came. You already had something you wanted to say. And it wasn't good. Look, it says, use of the N-word and other profane language and gestures to defame other people. Let me see, it says defame. Defame is to damage the good reputation of someone. Slander or libel those persons. Okay, then it says attacking Moorish Americans. And I see, he said, I see that me as a specifically an attack and a target attack on the temple, on the Moorish South Temple of America, uh, on the temple Moors, quote unquote. So this group is specifically for Moorish Americans. So you come on here to attack. You come on here to, to try to belittle the movement. Why are you full of so much hate? For people you don't know, you was if you were black, you were already full of hate. You just got more hate. Where are you getting that from? If the more, if you don't approve of the temple of the movement, just leave it alone. That's all you got to do. I don't go looking for people that believe in status and jurisdiction and all. I don't go looking for them. I let them people go ahead. That's what you want to do. I'm trying to stick to the prophets program. You go with the program that well, maybe you are going with it. You will always be able to tell a tree by the fruit that it produces. Bananas do not fall off of apple trees. I don't care who says they're a grand sheik, a sheik adept, whatever. What you produce will always see by what type of people adhere to your ideology or your doctrine or your way of instructions. It looks to me like Somebody is inspiring, or somebody's, a lot of hate towards the temple, the prophet, and the Moorish Americans. Because they, they just keep coming and attacking. It's nowhere in the scripture. Okay, my whole point is this. When it comes to this group. And matter of fact, when it comes to the Moors in America, period. Those who openly and immediately disregard the description rules and regulations of the group have no intention from the beginning, they had no intention to observe any descriptions, rules, or regulations of the group. They're about something else. And when it comes to the Moors, to the prophet, to the movement, we're at a point in time where you need to just leave them alone. You, you can't help some people. As soon as they come up, this, as soon as they come on with that lower self, cut them right off. You're going to have no choice because eventually these groups are already out in society connecting themselves with the prophet and the temple. And they know they're not connected with it. That's the thing that gets me. They know better than that. Connecting themselves in some way, shape, or form, you ought to stop that because you know it's not true. You are here talking about your right to travel. You don't need no driver's license. The United States is a corporation. They don't have no jurisdiction. Ain't none of that got to do with the prophet. Matter of fact, the, the, the prophet said, I'm going to help this government, and he is helping it. I don't care what y'all say. I've seen where the European has agreed, look, if y'all going to do it like that, go ahead. As far as the prophet and the movement, this common sense. You cannot go start a terrorist organization in this country and it be recognized by this country. They'll lock you right up immediately. 
The prophet didn't start no radical terrorist organization. He started a divine, he established a divine and a national movement. And, and as a matter of his spiritual and legal genius, he established it. That's why he changed it from a civic. Some of y'all strung out on that. To a religious organization. Death to the civics. Act 6 says we are teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed. Isn't that civic? Um, he established it as a religious corporation. Everything is a corporation, Mo. Everything is a corporation. Islam and, and legal charters, uh, legal uh, contracts, legal warrants, have, our forefathers came up with that, that way of interacting in society and creating legal and binding agreements. Come on. You let somebody feed you with that much wind? No, no, uh-uh. But this is what we're going to have to deal with. These Asiatics, because um, this brother named Shem Il, I think, I ran across a video that he had posted. And in this video, he was saying that he had a copy of an FBI report on the Moorish uh, confusion, basically. That was, that was springing up in, all in the courts and everywhere else. And they identified certain groups of people who said they were Moors. None of them that they associated with the Moors divine and national movement. Now, you can call it sellouts or whatever cheap shot you want to take. That's childish. But the European basically said this was the uh, result of the investigation. They pointed out what groups were refusing to obey traffic laws. They pointed out what, and saying they were Moors or whatever. And they said, at, well, the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated, whatever. They said, this group is a religious organization and has no association with the above-named groups, period. Now, you can say what you want. You can do things the way you want. We're going to follow the prophet and do it the way he said do it to the best of our ability. And what you and your other people or leaders are saying doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Go ahead and say it. Go ahead and do it. You got no problem with it. Leave us alone. Why are you attacking? If what you, if what your plan, if you are so confident that that is the right way for our people, go ahead. And then we'll look at the results. Because as of now, the historical results is Asia is getting locked up left and right. That's the result. So. You can say you were right or wrong. and It doesn't matter. You're locked up. They're not bothering the Moors. Because the prophet had the authority to return nationality. You're missing something. They're missing something, Moors. He's the only one that got it. That's why there was a struggle to try to take it over. Because they realized, man, this boy got the key. Not only through to be recognized by this government, but the nations of the earth. And I can tell you about that, too. You, you know, some of these Asiatic talk back. Well, the Moors is not interacting with other nations. They don't do. You don't know what they do. You don't know what they do. And for most of those Asiatics, Moors, they don't need to know what we do. Because they, if they're that dangerous with what they think they know now, how dangerous would they be if they really knew the truth? Islam, Islam, Moors, Islam, brothers and sisters. Give, just give me a few seconds. I want, I want to finish this up right here. Morris, you know, um, I'm thankful to Allah that, and humble, serious. I've been over 40 some years as a part of this divine and national movement. I done seen it unfold. I done seen some things. Uh, I've seen it. As a matter of fact, people that have been involved longer than I, and even back then, we could see some things coming. And if you know the nature of being black and why, if you know all of the psychological parameters, involved, if you understand that it was a mind job, if you understand it's a way of mental slavery and keeping you in control of what other people think rather than what you think, if you understand that, then you understand how important it is either to stick with the prophet or go your own way, okay, if you understand that. The prophet incorporated this movement as a religious corporation. 
the most significant thing that jumps out at me over time is that because it is your religion that you are of Moorish descent. That's part of your religion. In America, you can't question people's religion. If it's not interest to society, you can't question the religion in America. The courts won't even entertain it. Entertain it, rather. They don't like to entertain it because they say it's like entering into a religious thicket where the law has no, not only no power, but no vision. Okay? So that as a part of the Moorish Divine and National Movement, the Moorish Science Temple of North America, you can claim your nationality and practice your religion according to the dictates of your conscience. It's nowhere that the prophet said all Moors would practice alike. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. It's law, he said, that uh, all subordinate temples are to establish their own laws and customs in conjunction with the prophet's laws. And I hear these Asiatics talking, and I know they don't know what they're talking about. They just, like parrots, just rattling off what somebody else rattled off to them. I've been to temples that were like, yeah, it seemed like a churchy environment, but it was a, it was love in the, in the place. I've been to temples that were more militant type and, and like a uh, Arabic Islamic setting. I've been to, uh, I'll tell you what, in 1979, I went to Newark, New Jersey, and I had an uh, uh, address for a temple there. And when I went to the temple, um, first thing the Moor at the door asked me for was my nationality card. So I showed him, he brought me in. And in this temple, it was probably about, I don't know, 75 or 100 people in this temple. And uh, half of them, the women sat on the right. And they had on all white, all white dresses and everything, white shoes and everything, white turban. And the button in the middle. And on the left side, all the brothers sat. And they had um, all navy blue suits, maroon ties, and fezes. Islam? And the Grand Sheik was at a white podium, and he was speaking. Now, I can't, not, can't say I remember what, how he, what he spoke on. But there was a picture behind him. And I'm just sharing it. You know, you more, give me a minute. There was a picture behind him of this brother. I thought it was the prophet at first. And he was standing on a 45. He had on a gold out, Morse outfit like a, a, a shirt and pants, but gold moors, uh, white boots, white gloves, and a white crown on his head. And the, the, the I don't know, the, the material from the crown went down on his shoulders. And I'm looking at this. Oh, he had, he had his arms stretched out, each arm stretched out. And he had a cup in each hand. And one cup was turned up, and the other cup was turned down. And, uh, the significance of that came later, but I didn't know and didn't. I'm not a fact. I didn't know till later. Maybe a couple of years later, that was one of the temples that had come under Brother uh, G. Gibbonsville or John Gibbonsville. I don't know what I think his name was. That was one of the uh, temples that it came under him, and it was powerful. But it was a completely different environment. We have to not associate with people that intend on continually practicing the things that bring dishonor, disgrace, and disrespect to every nation that lives their life. That's protecting the prophet. We can't even deal with them. Because they, they, they don't want nothing to do with the prophet. You hear them quote, they love the quotes now. And that's, that's basically uh, hearsay. Not saying the Moors lied or anything, but that's hearsay. What the Moors said the prophet said or what someone else remembered the prophet said, that's not law. All the Moors are going to come in with their eyes open, seeing all and knowing all. Well, you definitely don't see because what you say indicates that you're as blind as a bat. You definitely don't see. And you don't know either. Because you're all them people, Moors, all they deal with is what somebody else has told them. I'm not going to name anybody, but you know who I'm talking to. What somebody else, they speak, spit it out just like it's the gospel truth. And it's not. And it's not. We're at a significant point. See, I got, I believe like the prophet believed. I do, in my heart. He said, I truly believe that my people will find the true and divine way and stop serving carnal customs and merely ideas of men that have never done them any good, but it always harmed them. That insulting each other, that attacking each other, that's hating on each other, slandering and murdering each other is what slaves have been doing and taught to do and for 400 years, 500 years, whatever. So it's doing the same thing. That's not what the prophet built. And that's not what we're building on. 
again, you know, thanks for giving me a chance. Uh, love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice to all of the Moors. The prophet set it up that even if you have a different bent, you can be a part of the movement. Every temple is not the same. Uh, some are going to serve in one capacity. Their gifts going to be in one capacity. Some will be in another. Some may be feeding the hungry. Islam. Some may set up classes in science and math and whatever on the internet. Some may establish a, a high school on the internet or college degrees on the internet. Not no rip-off stuff now. Because we're not the same. But we all following one prophet, one temple, and there's only one program. 